Hi. Welcome to Inference. In this video, I will be talking about transcendental categories. In the history of philosophy, the term transcendental has been used in a variety of ways. In its broadest sense, it refers to anything that goes beyond the physical or material world. This includes concepts such as the soul, God, and the afterlife. The term has also been used to describe the ultimate reality that lies beyond our everyday experience. The concept of the transcendental has been around since the time of the ancient Greeks. Plato, for example, believed that there was a realm of forms that was beyond the physical world. Aristotle, on the other hand, argued that the highest reality was the unmoved mover, which was the cause of all motion. The term, transcendental, was first used in its modern philosophical sense by Immanuel Kant. For Kant, the transcendental was the realm of pure reason, which was the source of all our knowledge. Kant believed that the physical world was just a manifestation of our mental concepts. In the 19th century, the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer used the term, transcendental, to describe the ultimate reality that lies beyond our everyday experience. Schopenhauer believed that the physical world is an illusion and that the only true reality is the will, which is the force that drives all human action. The 20th century philosopher Martin Heidegger also used the term, transcendental, to describe the ultimate reality. Heidegger believed that the physical world is just a projection of our minds. He argued that the only thing real is being, which is the ground of all beings. The term, tr transcendental, has also been used in a religious or spiritual sense. For example, some religions believe in a transcendental reality that is beyond our everyday experience. This includes concepts such as heaven, nirvana, and enlightenment. A transcendental category is a way of classifying phenomena that are not limited to the empirical world, but rather extend to the realm of the absolute. The most fundamental transcendental category is the thing in itself, which is the ultimate reality that lies beyond the reach of our senses and understanding. Other transcendental categories include space, time, causality, and freedom. These categories are not just abstract concepts, but ways of understanding the world that is built into the very fabric of our being. Kant's transcendental categories are often criticized for being too general, and for not providing a clear way to distinguish between the different types of phenomena that they encompass. However, these criticisms fail to take into account the fact that Kant's categories are not meant to be a comprehensive classification of all possible types of phenomena. Rather, they are meant to provide a general framework for understanding the nature of reality. In recent years, the concept of the transcendental has been revived by philosophers such as Alain Badiou and Slavoj Zizek, who have used it to develop a new way of thinking about the nature of reality. Badiou's work in particular has been influential in the development of contemporary continental philosophy. A transcendental argument is an argument that proceeds from an analysis of the conditions of the possibility of some experience to a conclusion about the reality of the object of that experience. In other words, it is an argument that starts from what we can know about our experience and uses that to conclude the nature of reality. The most famous transcendental argument is Kant's argument for the existence of the noumenal world. Kant's argument proceeds from the fact, fact that we experience the world as a series of appearances. He then argues that the only way to make sense of this is to postulate the existence of a noumenal world, which is the world as it is, independent of our experience. Several other transcendental arguments have been proposed, including arguments for the existence of God, the soul, and the self. The key feature of all transcendental arguments is that the direction of their argument, so to speak, is the opposite way compared to a traditional argument. While a traditional argument tries to see where available evidence leads, a transcendental argument looks at what would already have to be the case to have the possibility for the very existence of said evidence. Because of that, transcendental arguments are more fundamental and stronger. Let's see another example of a transcendental argument. Plato used a transcendental argument to refute the sophists. When he proved that logic exists, Plato argued with the sophists about the existence of logic. He argued that, since you would have to use logic to deny logic, it must follow that logic is real. The sophists, on the other hand, argued that logic is nothing more than a tool that people use to persuade others, so it doesn't exist. 
In the end, Plato's argument won out, and logic has been considered a real thing ever since. However, there is still some debate on the matter, and some philosophers argue that logic is nothing more than a human construct. In any case, it is clear that Plato believed in the existence of logic, and his arguments were instrumental in establishing it as a real thing. Understanding that some categories of being have to exist, regardless of our opinion, is a big problem for the modern view of relativism. On top of that, we can use the same kind of argument we have seen previously to show that relativism itself is very problematic. If relativism is universally true, then everything is relative. From this, it must follow that relativism itself is also relative. If this is true, it follows that not everything is relative. Therefore some things are objectively true independently of subjective perception. Through this short series of logical steps, using the method of reduction to absurdity, we can see how adopting the position of relativism ultimately leads to the denial of relativism. This is a fundamental self-contradiction. Because universal relativism is fundamentally self-contradictory, then it must be false. Therefore, there is objective truth. An even greater implication of transcendental categories, apart from showing the realms of objective truth, is that, when we bundle them together and consider their continuous interactions, we start grasping an even greater order of reality. If the transcendental categories like time, self, space, logic, etc. display some instances of undeniable necessary truths, there is an even more fundamental level of existence than this one. Because these transcendental categories are not fractured from each other, but are constantly interacting coherently, we need to ask the question, what is allowing this to happen? What supertranscendental reality, so to speak, is allowing the interactions of the more limited transcendentals such as logic and time? Because abstract categories like logic, numbers, and geometric shapes exist, the ultimate reality must be beyond the physical. If the matter is all there is then logic would be only a side effect of matter in motion. To say that would be self-contradictory. If logic is only a side effect of matter then any argument used to defend that position would not be true, because logic would not be universal and thus what is true could become false. Thus, the argument to prove that logic is a side effect of matter, even if it is accepted as true, would inevitably become false when matter changes the functioning of so-called logic. This idea is self-contradictory, so it is not true. It follows that the ultimate reality is immaterial. Since the mind is the only thing that can grasp the transcendental categories, the ultimate reality would have to be a mind as well. It would have to be a mind greater than a human mind, however, because we can't perceive all the fine details of the constant interactions of these categories. We can only grasp the reality that this is occurring. However, someone has to be observing this. And yes, I mean someone. The self is another transcendental category. This couldn't be more obvious. You need a self to form an argument about the existence of the self. This is another self-contradiction. Therefore the self must exist. So, the ultimate reality is an immaterial person with a mind capable of sustaining all of reality, and the interactions between the different components of it. In other words, for you to think about this video right now, the mind of God must exist. The mind of God is necessary to have all the interactions of the transcendental categories continually occur. Alright, folks, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about transcendental categories. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.